Live at 5, Q1043. What a thrill and a pleasure to bring back an old friend into the Q1043 studios from Moody Blues fame. Mr. Justin Hayward joins us in Hello. studio. It has been way, way too long, my friend. Yes, lovely, lovely to be here. Lovely to be back again. Yeah, thank you. Lovely to see you again, my friend. Uh, yeah, yeah. See what I did there? <laughs> How have you been? Yeah, very, very well. Very well. Busy, but very well, yes. Thank you. Good. You just did a Moody's cruise? Yes, we were on tour with the band for um, about a month, and then at the end of it, the last week, we did um, a Moody's dedicated uh, cruise. Yeah, so uh, about 3,500 people on a, on a cruise ship and us. Oh, okay, so I and, have... And some friends of ours, too. Stephen Bishop was there. Oh, fantastic. And, um, and Little River Band and Greg Lake and uh, it was very and the Zombies Colin and uh, from oh, the Zombies group. dear friends dear yeah, friends yeah, very nice. I wouldn't say that but you know it's, it's, uh, <laughs> no they they are from to us oh okay yeah, Greg course, matter of fact yeah. I think Greg was the last person here playing live oh yeah uh, so tell me what it's like being on a cruise with three thousand crazed Moody fans. I enjoyed every moment of it. I re I really did. You know, it's a, it's a little bit. Life isn't like that where you normally where you walk out your cabin door and um, hey, Jasper. You know, <laughs> it's a, my life isn't like that. Nobody knows me where I am, where I live. But uh, that that was how it was. But uh, there was lots of other things as well as the shows, and we we did lots of question and answer things. I did a little presentation of my own, uh, you know, of spirits of the Western Sky. That was nice, uh, and uh, so it, it was good. It was good fun, and the questions you get asked are often very funny and amusing. And, what's uh, okay? What's the most bizarre question that you've gotten asked recently? Um, the, the the most bizarre. Well, it's strangely enough that the, the most this one the, the one that I'd never heard before. Often there they go along the lines of, "If you could be, what's your favorite?" You know. Favorite song. What's favorite, your favorite yeah. song? And what's your favorite this? And what's your favorite that? Or, or if you could spend a day with somebody, and yeah. uh, or, or from the past or something. And I usually say, well, one of my own family. That would be nice, you know, <laughs> from uh, from uh, a couple of hundred years ago. But somebody asked on, on this cruise. They said, um, and, and please, there's no no offense. So I I, I, I warn you all right now. So they, they said. I heard that Nights in White Satin was a gay song. Oh, my God. Yes, was a gay song. So um, <laughs> I couldn't think of anything to say. Yeah. There's except, just some moments that stop you cold. That's one of them. Except that I think that makes me a lesbian. I, I like that. <laughs> so a lesbian trapped in a man's body. Do, yes. uh, speaking yeah. of the song that lives forever and ever, we call this segment Live at Five. You've brought that beautiful guitar. What are you playing? What it's did a you bring Collings. Me? Made in, made, in, made in Austin, uh, Texas, yeah. Well, you've got that gorgeous yep. acoustic. Can it trouble you for a song? Yes, yes. Let, let, let's do that. Let's, let's do that. Uh, Justin that Hayward. Here's one that you're never going to hear anywhere else. Justin yep. Hayward doing Nights in White Satin Acoustic okay. at Q1043. Um, are we still rolling? Night and white satin Never reaching the end Letters I've written Never meaning to send Beauty I'd always missed With these eyes before Just what the truth is I can't say anymore Cause I love you Yes, I love you Some hand in hand Just what I'm going through They can't understand 
Some try to tell me Thoughts they cannot defend Just what you want to be You will be in the end And I'll love you Yes, I'll love you Outstanding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Justin Hayward live in the studio at Q1043. That is just as gorgeous a song. <laughs> yeah. When you were writing that, when that Days of Future yeah. Past is, yeah, yeah. comes out, do you have, do you turn to John Lodge? Do you look at each other and say, well, there's one that's <laughs> going to live forever in a day? Um, no, I was completely on my own when I wrote it, you know, and I, I came back from a gig one night and uh, 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 about four or five o'clock in the morning, I was sharing a flat with Graham, actually, and our two girlfriends. And uh, I came back from this gig and sat on the side of the bed and, and just wrote that, which is the basic song. And uh, I, um, Mike, Mike Pinder had actually written um, a song called Dawn is a Feeling, uh, a long time before we recorded the Days of Future Past album. And th this stuff wasn't written for Days of Future. It was written as a stage show first. Oh, that really? turned into Days of Future Past. And M Mike had written this beautiful song that he asked me to sing called Dawn is a Feeling. And I, and I just wanted to write a kind of counterpoint to that. So I, I sat on the side of the bed and wrote it. And then I knew we were going into a rehearsal room the next day. And we went into the in this place in Barnes in West London. And... Um, and I played it to it. I played that to everybody, and and the other guys just sort of said, yeah, "It's all right." <laughs> and there was no real enthusiasm. Really? Well, I think there was no wow because I was often expected to just come up with a song. <clears throat> I was always the first on a recording. You know, oh, yeah. just Justin will have something kind of thing, <laughs> and the other guys. You, you, you know, Graham and John would write in the studio. Ray would always have something prepared. And Mike would. But other guys would just do it as a sort of session in the studio. So th th they said, oh, that's all right. And then Mike Pinder just said, play it again. So I, I played it again. And, and uh, I went, no, it's in my head. And he went, da 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 With the on, flute? On, no. No. He did it on the Mellotron. Oh. Da 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 You know, and suddenly everybody, all the other guys were interested because I think they could start to see their own contribution to it as a, um, as a where song. Where it all fits in. Where it fit, started to fit in, yeah. We rehearsed it that day, and then we recorded it a couple of days later for the BBC for the first time, and a long time before we recorded it for Decca. It, it's <coughs> remarkable. When you think of, you know, progressive rock and, you know, mm -hmm. Days of Future Past, Watershed album in terms of recording, in terms yeah. of having the orchestra. As you said, Mike Pinner playing Mellotron mm -hmm. and keys, and rock bands with a flautist in it, you know, with yeah. having Ray aboard, it sets the tone for how the music is going to go, if that's your instrumentation. Yeah, I think it does. I, I mean, bef before before the Mellotron, uh, I mean, I, I was writing songs for the band, but Mike was always playing piano or Vox Continental, and we, we did one great record called Fly Me High that, that I wrote before that, uh, after the kind of rhythm and blues stuff that the band was known for in the first year which we weren't very good at it, to be quite honest. <laughs> and then um, even on Fly Me High, there's a lot of piano. But as soon as we found the Mellotron, Ma Mike knew of this instrument called the Mellotron that could reproduce orchestral sounds. And as soon as we found that, that made my songs work. Tuesday and um, you know, nights. And, th and then we were away. And, and Ray was pl playing harmonica up until that time, and then he took up flute. And then that worked as well. We Funny how organically... That. 
the sound of the band came together. Yeah. For there are people who don't know what you're talking <clears throat> about, Mellotron. Oh, yeah, when you not. when you talk about when you think about synthesizers now and keyboards mm. and MIDI and any sound in the world is in your computer and you just put a keyboard to it. This was a remarkable thing. It was actually physically a series of tapes. It was a bank of loops of tapes of a sound of string section or a choir. And when you press the key, it actually activated that loop of tape. The first time I saw one, uh, you know, I was that geek, uh, Keith Emerson and Rick Wakeman and Yes and the Moody's. And the first time I saw one, uh, they had to pull me off of it. It was just the most remarkable effect. It sounds like some sort of steam-driven machine from the 1800s, but there had never been a sound like that. No, it was, and particularly when Mike, Mike was the only person I saw really do it well um, uh, on stage. And when you shoved it through, you know, a couple of Marshall high stacks, you know, four by 12 stacks, it sounded great. But um, it, it wasn't a loop, actually. It was just a, a, a one tape that lasted for eight seconds. So you had you, could, you had eight seconds to play the note and, oh, then, I see. and then it would spring back. Oh. So the only way to play it was to kind of roll your fingers over it, which... I never realized that. So yes. you couldn't hold a note down. No, you, you had eight seconds to hold a note. It was actually a sound effects. It was built as a sound effects instrument. And um, Mike Mike knew about it. And, and it, you know, the rest of the stuff were like trains coming and going through tunnels and cockerels and, that, <laughs> you know, the usual right. sound effects to springs, uh, Spike Jones kind of stuff. Right. And... Um, then Mike had the idea of getting rid of all of that, duplicating these particular set of orchestral tapes and putting them onto the four little manuals that there was, four little uh, keyboards that there was within the one instrument, yeah. Fantastic. So, uh, so he could play, he was all automatically double tracking with both hands, so he would cover the one hand, the left hand with the right hand, where the right hand would stop. He invented that sound. He invented it, yeah, totally, yeah. Fantastic. Ch changed our lives, really.